Hey YouTube, welcome to the second half of this Pi Game Tricks tutorial. Talking about full screen, getting continuous input from the keyboard, and uh, using pygame.transform.rotate to rotate images. Let's go ahead and look at uh, rotating images. What we want to do is we essentially want to set up a base image and rotate that base image over and over. What you don't want to do is you don't want to rotate an image and then rotate that again and then rotate that again, um, rotating the rotation. Because if you do that, you're going to get some really hard distortion after a, a significant number of rotations. Um, so let's look at how we do that. We set up our sprite class uh, based on the typical setup. Uh, you can look at that in any other video. I'm going to pass the screen object into my plane uh, class in this specific example. You don't have to do that in your game, obviously, and you probably won't. Um, I'm going to load my master image, the image that I want to rotate. In this example, it is the pilot wings pilot, uh, plane sprite from uh, the Super Nintendo game. Uh, I'm going to convert it, then I'm going to set my sprite.image attribute as my image master, and then get my uh, bounding rectangle. Um, and then I'm going to, because I, the reason why I passed the screen in is so that I can, no matter what the resolution of the screen, I can put my plane in the middle of the screen, which is what this line of code is right there. Then this is, um, uh, this attribute, self.dir, stands for direction. Um, maybe more more appropriate is uh, angle. Um, but essentially what it is is that by changing this number, we're going to change the degree of the rotation based on 360 degrees around the image. Uh, just a quick um, note, uh, most of the times we think of rotations based on a Cartesian system, which is basically where uh, zero and, yeah, zero is at the top at north, and then 90 degrees is east, 90 more degrees at 180 is south, 270 is at west, and then 360 is back at the top. But in Pygame, we use a mathematical rotation system, uh, and zero degrees is at east. So that's just important to consider. For something symmetrical like my plane, it's probably not as big a deal, but uh, for some of the sprites you may be using, it, it may be more of a big deal, uh, more of a deal. Um, so. We'll, we'll, we'll use this self.dir to adjust the degree of our rotation. Uh, then down in our update method, um, we're going to set our old center. Uh, basically, we don't, want our, uh, we don't want our image to move. We don't want it to scoot around the screen because when you, uh, when you rotate, when you transform, your bounding rectangle is going to change, which means that your center is going to change but we don't want the center to change. We want the center to remain constant no matter what the rotation is. And that's what this line of code does. Then this is where the magic happens. We're going to uh, rotate this image, this master image, and then put that image onto our self.image, our, our sprite image, which is gonna go onto the screen. That's Self.image is what gets blitted onto the screen. That's what gets updated in the sprite class, um, not our image master. Um, and again, from the last video, just to reiterate, because it's awesome, uh, if you don't know what something does, just delete it and retype the parentheses, and it'll tell you what that method expects. So it expects a surface, which is our, our image that we loaded, our image master, and then the angle to which to rotate it. So what that means is that down here in these two methods, we're just going to adjust self.dir. If we add degrees to self.dir, then this will update, and it updates every frame. It's going to change that transformation. Uh, same thing when we do turn right. Turn left and turn right, we're going to add and subtract degrees to self.dir. And uh, in these two functions, if it goes past 360 degrees, we're going to set it back to, to zero. If, if you get... If you... Uh, if you change self.dir uh, and it, and the degrees are greater than 360, you're gonna get an error because you can't transform something more than 360 degrees. Uh, so then we, we transform it, then we get the new center, I mean the new uh, bounding rectangle and set the center of that rectangle to our, our new center. And I just went through these. You're just, you're gonna call these two methods of this object, this plane object, 
when you press your you know right and left keys and that's going to rotate your image by just simply changing the number of degrees in that self.dir is going to rotate it because it's in our update in our update method let's talk about getting continuous input from the keyboard um, this stuff up here you hopefully have seen before i'm making a background uh, I'm, I'm making the background blue putting it on the screen instantiating my plane object i'm passing in the screen so that i can always put the plane in the center of the screen i'm putting all my sprites into a sprite group in this uh, example i'm using dot ordered updates uh, there's three ways you can do sprite groups you can do sprite dot group sprite dot ordered updates uh, or sprite dot layered updates and i will talk about layered updates in a later uh, video that's a really really useful command uh, then what we're going to do is that uh, because the update uh, method of our plane object gets called every frame, which is 60 per second, um, if, we, if we got continuous input every single frame and rotated every single frame, our plane is going to swirl like really quickly and we want it to swirl more naturally. We want it to, to more uh, uh, flip, you know, rotate. And so we're going to set this ticker variable, this sentinel, to say if, uh, and down, later down here in the code, we're going to say if, uh, you know, if it's been three frames, then check for, for input from the keyboard, because then it will be more of a natural, slower rotation. We make our clock object, make our gaming loop, loop bool, start our loop, set our frame rate. We check to make sure when we press the red X, it quits, and when we press escape, it quits. Um, these two lines are experimental. Uh, I basically was trying to see if I could uh, change the, I could change to full screen just by pressing a key. In this instance, I pressed the key C. Um, it wasn't working perfectly, um, and I won't go why it wasn't perf working perfectly, but I'll get that working in another video and show you how that works. Um, then, getting continuous input. What we want to do is use uh, this method. Um, of the pygame documentation, pygame.key.getPressed. And we assign this to a variable. In this uh, example, we assign it to keys. What pygame.key.getPressed uh, pygame does is it makes a list and that contains all of the keys on the keyboard that are getting pressed in that frame. So then all you have to do, it, it makes a list every frame. All you have to do is check to see is this key in this list, which is all the keys that are getting pressed. If it is, then rotate or jump or whatever you want to do with your sprite. Um, again, I've made this, this ticker so that I can, instead of every frame rotate, if I'm pressing you know, the arrows down, I actually have it set as A and D. Um, instead of every frame, I want it every three frames to make it more of a slower, uh, a slower rotation. So again, if pygame.kd, which is the D key, is in that list, then turn right. If A is in that list, then turn left. Then I have uh, normal sprite updating, clearing the screen, updating, drawing to the screen, updating the screen. And then down here, what I've done is said, if, it's, if I'm at three, reset it to zero. If I'm not at three for my delay, then uh, add one and then I call my main and start my program. So let's look at that one more time. I press D, hold down D and it'll rotate. Again, this isn't rotating every frame, it's rotating every three frames. Press A, it'll rotate to the left. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed both videos and hope to see you again. See you later.